tree. Now these are the gifts Christ gave to the church, the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, and the pastors and teachers. Their responsibility is to equip God's people to do his work and build up the church, the body of Christ. This will continue until we all come to such unity in our faith and knowledge of God's Son that we will be mature in the Lord, measuring up to the full and complete standard of Christ. Then we will no longer be immature like children. We won't be tossed and blown about by every wind of new teaching. We will not be influenced when people try to trick us with lies so clever they sound like the truth. Instead, we will speak the truth in love, growing in every way more and more like Christ, who is the head of his body, the church. He makes the whole body fit together perfectly. As each part does its own special work, it helps the other parts grow, so that the whole body is healthy and growing and full of love. Ephesians 4, 11 through 16, and that's the uh, Passion Translation. Okay. Go ahead and have a seat, everyone. Thank you. Okay. So, so as you can probably tell, the fivefold ministry are these five offices, if you will, that Christ has uh, specified. Right? We have apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers. Okay. Uh, there's a little trick to, to way, uh, the way you remember it, okay? So first of all, you start with the prophets, because they're, they're always pointing the way, right? The evangelists, they have the longest reach, because they're always reaching out to the people that are outside, okay? So that's the evangelists, okay? The pastors are the ones, okay, if you think about it, this is your wedding finger. Your, mm -hmm. So the pastors are the ones that are basically uh, caring and loving the flock. Okay, and the teachers, well, the teachers are the thinky because they will clear out your ears so you can hear <laughs> the truth, all right? And then, of course, the apostle is the thumb. And the apostle could actually be any one of those five. And as a matter of fact, it's the apostle that actually can touch every one of those as well. So just a quick way to remember. So remember apostles, okay, uh, prophets, evangelists, Pastors, teachers. All right. So now, why does Jesus talk about these different offices? Okay. Well, if you see here, it's to equip God's people to do his work and build up the church. Okay. So the reason why we have these five offices is so that we can be built up to equip the ecclesia, the body of Christ. All right. Um, and then notice, right, uh, unity in our faith and knowledge of God's Son, and we will be mature, all right? So, again, we have these five different uh, offices. You know, sometimes you have people that can do them all, but other, word, other times people have specific gifts, right? Because some are called to be teachers, some are called to be prophets, some are called to be evangelists, etc., etc., all right? So... The, the important thing, though, is, is when it's all working together, right, we will be mature. And again, mature is so that uh, when, because, you know, during the end times, there's going to be a lot of false teachers. So in order to discern what is true and what is not, the five-fold ministry should be in play so that we can readily discern what is actually going on, all right? Okay, so then we will no longer be immature like children, all right, but become more like Christ. Again, he is the head, we are the body. Now, notice here. Uh, we will speak the truth in love, growing in every way more and more like Christ. So notice, it does not say we won't speak because we don't want to offend anyone. It says we will speak the truth, but in love. All right? Growing away, they're growing in every way more and more like Christ. However, if you recall uh, from last week, I kind of showed you a couple places where Christ 
in love spoke the truth, but it came across pretty harsh. Wouldn't you agree? So there are times for that. But that's, again, discernment. You really have to be led by the Holy Spirit in those things. Now, it also says, right, he makes the whole body fit together perfectly. All right? Who does this? Are we trying to make each other fit together? Usually. Yes, but who should be doing it? <laughs> yeah. God. God, right? Because it says he will fit the whole body, right, together. All right. And so uh, with the whole, let's see, um, as each part does its own special work, it helps the other parts grow so that the whole body is healthy and growing and full of love which basically says, do your job, all right? And then when you do that, that results in a healthy, growing body that is full of love, okay? And just as an aside, when you're not here, is it, can we, can we benefit from your presence? Yes. No. No. <laughs> That's why it's important to be together. Mm -hmm. I mean, sure, we can say, oh, well, I'll be there in spirit. Well, yeah, fine. But actually being here in truth and spirit is way better. Because there's just some things, especially in the spiritual uh, world, where physical presence is important. Are so being here, spirit. yeah, that's right, that's right. <laughs> I mean, if you think about it, uh, on Pentecost, the 120, were they scattered all through Jerusalem and all the parts of Judea? You guys remember? Where were they? In the upper room and in the temple court. In the upper room. They were all together in the upper room. So there is something to be said about actually participating physically where we got all right so just wanted to put that in there all right so now let's talk about the office of prophet right now this is actually one of the gifts of the spirit prophecy all right so this is in first corinthians 14 1 3 4 8 5 b all right uh, it is good that you are enthusiastic and passionate about spiritual gifts especially prophecy when someone prophesies, he speaks to encourage people, to build them up, and to bring them comfort. The one who prophesies builds up the church. I desire even more that you impart prophetic revelation to others. Greater gain comes through the one who prophesies than the one who speaks in tongues. So obviously, as charismatics, we believe in speaking in tongues, you know, the tongues of angels as well as foreign tongues that we may not even know. And as a matter of fact, if you actually read the whole um, uh, chapter, Paul is the one that actually speaks tongues more than any of them. But here, he's still saying that prophecy is actually, of all the spiritual gifts, the one that is really, really important because it edifies the church, right? When it's encouraging people, building them up, bringing them comfort, that's edification. That's why prophecy is so important. Okay? Now, God prophesies or allows us to prophesy in different ways. Okay? Sometimes, I mean, just like what we've uh, just experienced this earlier this afternoon, He'll give us visions, or He'll give us words, or He'll give us feelings or thoughts. Okay? Another way God does it is actually through dreams. Right. And I pull out a couple of verses for you just to validate mm -hmm. that this is one of the ways that God speaks to his people. For God does speak, now one way, now another, though no one perceives it, in a dream, in a vision of the night, when deep sleep falls on people as they slumber in their beds. And that's in Job 33, 14 through 15. He said, Listen to my words. When there is a prophet among you, I, the Lord, reveal myself to them in visions. I speak to them in dreams. Numbers 12, 6. 
and afterward I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your old men will dream dreams. I'm looking at us, though. <laughs> your young men will see visions. Joel 2, 28. And uh, you're probably saying, well, how? okay, fine. This is all Old Testament stuff. All right? What about New Testament? Do they do dreams in the New Testament? Well, as a matter of fact, this is what I will do in the last days. I will pour out my spirit on everybody and cause your sons and daughters to prophesy. And your young men will see visions. And your old men will experience dreams from God. Acts 2.17. That's the Passion Translation. Obviously, this is directly from Joel, right? But that's because when the Lord came, he did not throw out the Old Testament. All right? Obviously, we, we have a, a, a new covenant with God. But it's not like anything in the Old Testament has passed away. As a matter of fact, Jesus, when he came, he came to fulfill the Old Testament. So everything that happened in the Old Testament is still valid. And that is actually shown right here in Acts. Yeah, ben. I can give you an example of that, that short thing that two nights ago, I, I had a dream, kind of a weird one, I was standing in the garage, the garage door was open, I was looking out the door, we, me and someone else that I knew in the dream, but I can't remember, we were working on something, he was kneeling down with his back to the door, and it was a typical Las Vegas blue sky. Huh? And the sudden clouds came in. Um, when clouds are far away and they're like a huge thunderstorm, you, just, you just see black and gray and, and they're solid looking things. When they get down to the ground, they look like fog. Mm -hmm. This looked like the full on cloud and it was coming in about one foot above the opening, the top of the door. So the top of our house was in the cloud, mm -hmm. in the storm but it wasn't coming in the garage. Hmm. And uh, and I tried to get this fellow who was working with me to look around and see, because I knew it meant difficulty, a lot of turbulence, hmm. but it wasn't gonna be allowed to come in. Hmm. And it was so bizarre that I, I wanted him to see it, he would not look. Hmm. But I didn't think much more about it till I got, during the course of the day, I, I was with a, a businessman who was worried about his world falling apart because of all of the economic turbulence is going on, and God goes, boom. And I said, hey, the Lord told me to tell you something, that when the economy crumbled earlier, and when the, when the COVID thing hit, your business was in trouble. And he wants you to remember that for the future. That's good. So, but that's just here and hand it out. Excellent. Excellent. So you see, the Lord does speak to us in dreams, through dreams, all right? So the reason why I'm setting this all up for you is because what I wanted to do was I wanted to share with you some prophecy that was given through dreams, all right? Uh, does anyone know who Dutch Sheets is? Mm -hmm. Okay, so Dutch Sheets, uh, Kent Christmas, uh, Greg Hood, uh, uh, Tim Sheets, we're all at a prophetic conference. Uh, they call it the Prophetic Summit in Ohio, literally just last week. And the word that uh, Dutch had for us in that was so powerful that I felt like the Lord wanted me to share it with all of you. Because what it was, was it was a map of what's going on right now. It, uh, it's going to be a review of what happened in 2022 these first three quarters and of course today October 1st is the last quarter of 2022 and it's it's going to be mind-blowing all right so here we go 